Hello and welcome to my channel. I am the Mad Computer Scientist. On this channel we talk about computer science and the occasional math topic that interests me. Today I'm going to take a slight break from that and to discuss a redeemed Zoomer video. But before we get into that, if you are new to this channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Be sure to ring that notification bell. And if you find what you see here useful or interesting, be sure to leave a comment. Now, I was not going to cover this one for a while, and I'm not sure it's still a good idea. I want to start this one with a disclaimer. I personally do not know if there is a god or not. I do not think Redeemed Azumer has met his burden of proof with this claim. I also think he is engaged in some bad logic, and that's what I wish to examine with this video. You are free to draw whatever conclusions you wish, if you would like to see the original argument he seems to be misunderstanding, please go watch a video put out by, I think it is the Discovery Institute by Dr. Jason Lyle, where he's trying to claim that fractals prove God. I will link that in the video section below. If you are interested in seeing how other people responded to him, please check out his 40 Arguments Against God Answered video and the number of responses to it. The reason I'm choosing this video is because this video specifically includes math, and he's making some interesting and incorrect claims, as well as misunderstanding Dr. Lyle's argument. Before I get into this video, I also have another warning I have to make. Redeemed Zoomer seemed to have little care for the amount of flashing that's going on when he's covering fractals, and he did not seem to realize that this may cause problems for people with epilepsy. I'm going to warn you that you may want to skip over those parts, or at least Perhaps go to another tab while he's discussing how fractals work and getting much of what Dr. Jason Lyle said about the argument. Wrong, let's go into what he actually said. Does God exist? Many atheists think there's no reason to believe in God because we have science to explain everything in the universe. It's true that science is able to explain the natural world, that's what it's for, but by definition science cannot tell us whether there's anything outside or above the natural world, in other words, whether there's anything supernatural. Generally when people speak of God, they mean a supernatural, all-knowing mind who is everywhere and can do anything. So what is math and what does it have to do with God? Math is about numbers and information about those numbers and ways numbers connect to each other, but where do we find all this math? And here we see Redeemed Zoomer making his first mistake. Perhaps he did not bother to research what mathematics actually is or a more scientific definition of math. I do not know if he is even aware that math is technically considered a pure science. From the Tennessee Tech University website, we get the definition that mathematics is the science study of quality, structure, space, and change. Mathematicians seek out patterns, formulate new conjectures, and establish truth by rigorous deduction and appropriately chosen axioms and definitions. Note that numbers are not included anywhere in this definition, although math does involve a lot of numbers. It may surprise Redeem Zoomer that there are fields of math that do not involve numbers at all, such as logic, and of course, Boolean algebra is applying mathematical concepts to logic, and of course in Boolean algebra you're not dealing with numbers, but you're dealing with propositions and whether the proposition is true or false. And if Redeem Zoomer seems to have a hard time with this, I can't wait to see someone explain not theory to him. But I am guessing Redeem Zoomer's grasp of basic Boolean algebra is so poor that he could not manage to figure out how to eliminate false answers on multiple choice tests. All this math. We can't see math, we can't touch math, we can't taste math. Math is only in the mind. We find it simply by thinking about it and figuring more and more things out. But wait, math also explains things. Math can explain everything from simple counting to the movement of planets. For any thing you can think of, there's a bunch of math that explains what's going on, even down to the atomic level. So, if math is only in our minds, but it also explains the natural world, then where does it come from? There's two possibilities, really. One is that math is just something we invented to explain what we observe in the natural world, and that would mean the origin of math is natural. But the other possibility is that math is already there because it controls the universe, and we've discovered it. And if that's true, then the origin of math is supernatural. 
And this is certainly true because the origin of everything we discovered that we did not make must be supernatural, of course. I am not sure redeemed Zoomer understands the ridiculous implications of the argument he just made. But while there is certainly argument to be had about whether math was discovered or whether math was invented, the issue here is that he's making another mistake. The way we use math is certainly a human invented language, but he does not seem to understand that math does not have a physical reality. Math, like all other languages, is an abstraction. It may represent concepts in the real world, and we certainly use it to describe things that happen in the real world, but the math itself does not have a physical existence. It has an existence in our minds. Here's why the latter option is correct. Math contains infinite information. There's an infinite number of numbers, each with their own individual properties, and there's an infinite number of numbers in between any two numbers. And we keep discovering things. Pi, which is the number that explains the area of a circle, has an infinite number of digits that we keep discovering by doing calculations. If we were just making this stuff up, we could make pi be whatever we want it to be, but we can't do that because we know that that's not true. We know that all this information is out there somewhere, but it can't be in our physical universe because our universe is finite and math is infinite. That means math contains every possible combination of numbers, and if we use numbers as code for letters, then math contains every possible combination of letters as well. That means every book that has ever been written already exists encoded in math somewhere. In fact, every book that possibly could be written already exists in math. And if we use numbers as code for particles and their locations, then you could say there's an exact copy of our universe encoded in math. But there's also more stuff in math. So that's why math can't possibly be contained just within our universe. If I were to give any advice to redeem the Zoomer about doing a video on abstraction, it's to make sure you have a good idea what mathematical abstraction is before doing a video on it. From the Internet Encyclopedia Philosophy, we see that abstraction involves arranging a domain of underlying objects into classes and identifying an object corresponding to each class, the abstract of that class. Note that the object is not the class itself. This is the fundamental mistake Redeemed Zoomer has made throughout this video so far. I am sure if he ever sees this video, which I doubt he will, he will be quick to point out that computer science is not mathematics. Well, he's slightly wrong about that one, because computer science broke off from mathematics, but if you think computer science doesn't use principles of mathematical abstraction in what they do, you've clearly never understood what computer science entails. Universe. But that's just the beginning. There's many pieces of evidence in math to show that math has a designer. Here's an example. One time someone discovered that this simple equation makes a very interesting shape when you graph it in the complex plane, and this is called the Mandelbrot set. But people have analyzed this shape and have found some very scary things about it. What's amazing about the Mandelbrot set is that you can zoom in infinitely and you'll keep finding new things. Over here, you can keep finding more and more copies of the Mandelbrot set no matter how far you zoom in. You could even zoom in really close to something like this, and it takes a while, but look, there's another little baby Mandelbrot set. Alternatively, you could go into this region and find completely different things. On the left side of this thing, you'll find these weird elephant-shaped things that have spirals that go on forever, and you could even zoom into the side of one of the spirals and find new spirals that repeat infinitely and keep generating new infinite patterns like this. Or you could go on the other side of the elephants and find these weird seahorse-shaped things that have different kinds of spirals that are connected to each other, and once again, they keep going on forever. You can zoom in infinitely, and you'll keep finding new patterns, but like I said, it's a different type of pattern. Seriously, any time you explore the Mandelbrot set, you can find brand new things, possibly things that no human has ever seen before, because like I said, there is infinite complexity and infinite information in this one shape. That's why this little shape is so scary. We did not invent this because we discovered it by accident, but we did not discover it in our universe. It has infinite complexity, so it can't possibly be in our universe because the universe doesn't have infinites. We discovered it just by calculating it. So where the heck did this thing come from? Basic common sense says that someone designed this, but no human designed it. Like we said, math only exists in the mind, so its origin must also be a mind. 
All these numbers and mathematical facts exist in the infinite mind of God, but it's not just mathematical truth that exists in the mind of God, but also moral truth and any kind of truth at all. Goodness, truth, and beauty are just mere opinions of the human mind, unless there is a supreme mind, God, who overrules all human opinions. Because math is beyond time, space, and limits, the existence of math proves the existence of God because math is in the mind of God. As the great scientist Galileo said, math is the language with which God has written the universe. Did he just say math controls the universe? Well, I'm gonna have to remember that one. Remember, kids, do your math homework if you want to grow up to become a wizard. No, Redeem Zoomer, math does not control the universe. Once again, you have misunderstood something fundamental. Math is a language we use to describe the universe. You've also made a false analogy here. Just because you claim that God has these properties and math has these properties, it does not mean, where your argument seems to be headed, that God is math. If God were math, then every mathematician would be a priest. Math is a tool that is both powerful and useful. It does not give you magical powers. I wish it did. Even my knowledge of programming does not give me mystical powers. It simply mystifies people who do not understand what's going on. Mystifying people and having magical powers are not the same thing. Just because you don't understand math, it doesn't mean that the people who know how to do math are wizards or gods. Math contains infinite information, so this mind must be all-knowing. Math controls the universe, so this mind must also be all-powerful. And math is beyond and outside of our natural world, so this mind must be supernatural. And we have just described God. And in this particular segment, we see him use the fallacy of not only a false analogy, but of the fallacy of the undistributed middle. He's assuming that because both math and God have the properties that he claims them to have, that therefore they are the same thing. Let's say I have a friend who is left-handed, a software engineer, and was a teacher at some point. I am also left-handed, some people might describe me as a software engineer, and I have also worked as a teacher in the past. By Redeem Zoomer's logic, that means we're the same person. But we are not because one of us is blonde, in this analogy, and the other one of us has brown hair. As I close out this video, I'm just going to remind everyone that I am not saying whether or not God exists with this video. I am saying Redeemed Zoomer's logic is bad. This was something of a different take of what I normally do, and if you liked it, I would like you to comment below. If you did not like it, I would also like you to comment below. I will go back to more educational style videos in a little bit here, but I'd also like to occasionally cover things that I think are just bad logic or bad argumentation, because as Redeemed Zoomer didn't seem to know, logic is a branch of mathematics. And of course, without applied logic, there would be no computer program at all. Thank you for watching this one, everyone. This one will be a bit longer. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos, put them in the comments below.